Greetings from Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry. Today I'm going to begin with a group of videos that I'm going to film over the next couple weeks on how to build a potage the Hopalong Hollow way. Hopalong Hollow scaping is my style of gardening and the reason it is is because it's the kind of gardening I do in the storybooks I write and illustrate. I translate it to my own gardening and it's sort of a storybook like look. It's easy to do, it's less expensive than formal gardening because you're going to use a lot of items that you just find or you get second hand or you have repurposed. So seeing as Hopalong Hollow is the central location in my storybooks, it is also the name of our farm here in East Tennessee where we grow gardens, we raise animals as pets. We have many, many animals from peacocks and geese and ducks to donkeys, sheep and goats, dogs and one cat at the moment. And I'm not quite sure whether my inspiration for my books comes from the farm or if my inspiration for my gardens comes from my books, but I actually think it's pretty much a two-way street. My belief is that a garden should be a lot more than a collection of plants and vegetables. No matter how healthy and beautiful they grow, if they don't have the right backdrop, if they don't have the right structure, the right garden bones, they just aren't as enticing and appealing and winsome as they could be if you give them a nice structure. And so in this video we're going to talk about building a potage from scratch creating a potage, which is the garden I'm looking out on right now. A potage is really my favorite kind of garden. I've mentioned it before for a lot of reasons. Of course it's February so it's not looking too beautiful right now. But potage simply means what you put in the pot. This is what you would grow in your garden to throw in the pot. Herbs, vegetables, roses, ornamentals, all sorts of things are grown in a potage. But to start a potage you want it to have good garden bones. And that's what we're going to talk about because even though I'm not a master gardener and I never will be, I do have a pretty good sense of design. And one thing I really do know how to design is hop along holoscaping. So if you like this kind of look, please hang around and we'll start with creating and designing you, your own brand of hop along holoscaping. So the first thing you want to do is get yourself a nice fat notebook with graph paper and pour yourself a cup of coffee or tea. Hopefully you're going to fill this notebook up over the couple of years with ideas and plans and all kinds of wonderful things. I'm going to start with a very simple plan and we are just going to assume right now that you're starting from scratch. I'm going to start with a little rectangle or a square. Now you want to choose your plot of land so that you're able to expand in several different directions because over the years you, you may want to grow this bigger and bigger and bigger. Mine started as this little strip right here alongside this porch that I'm sitting on right now. The porch goes off this way and steps go this way and this little strip I used about 2 feet by 12 feet and I planted herbs in this the first year. The second year I grew it to a larger rectangle because I was able to expand outward and then I put a walkway of brick in between and I was able to grow a lot more in this size. Now before we go on and you see how much this potager has grown over the last several years, I want to talk about the elements that you need to give yourself really good garden bones in Hopalong Holoscaping. I choose about five different elements in building a garden structure and garden bones. Stone. Stone is great for walls, small gravel and pebbles, and river rock is good for pathways. Timbers. You can make raised beds out of timbers, which we do a lot of here, cedar, posts. You can make garden structures such as um, arbors and pergolas. You can make little garden borders with stone, as you can see right there. If you use your trimmed wisteria, your willow, 
your trimmed uh, rambling roses. You can build little woven fences. And then using old wood, gates, all sorts of things you can do. Just using the things that you found. Also, you can see the pathway here where we, you've used the timbers. I've used salvaged brick. Now, you can buy railroad ties. These are old timbers from off of our, our old bridge. And this brick was salvaged and it came from Craigslist. You can get really good deals on wonderful old brick. I like old brick because it um, has nice rounded edges and it's got a lot of different colors to it. Here, stone we've just collected. Here again, timbers. More stone. More gravel from the creek bank. The trick is to keep repeating these elements throughout your garden so that you have some sort of consistency. You want to keep on designing and building on with these elements. So the two elements so far we've seen, three elements, are brick, stone, and wood. Another example of wood right here. This is from the trimmed wisteria bush that was just about covering our house. I trimmed that in the autumn, I believe, after the leaves had fallen. Made a nice little woven fence here. This encloses a strawberry bed, which is going to be turned into something else because I'm going to move these strawberries up off the ground so the slugs don't get them. There again, stone. So in this section of Potager, you see the elements of wood, brick, stone, and the fourth element, salvaged metal pots. So here again, we're back at our bed. You choose the elements you want to build with. In this case, I've got timber surrounding this bed. I've got a brick walkway. And I've used the brick once again. I've repeated the brick, only I've used it in a little stacking motion here. One brick stacked against the other. A little more decorative, but very old-fashioned. And we've got more stone going along here. And we've also got stone um, walkway here. The garden grew into a rectangle. And we'll just stop right there because let's say you're going to start right here. Let's say you've got your plot. Say you've got a piece of grass in the middle of the yard or up against your house. And those are both good places as long as you have room to grow. You are going to mark it out. And then you're going to do the no-dig method. If you're starting from scratch, this is great. I just learned about this. I wish I'd have known about it a long time ago. But there's a man called Charles Dowding on YouTube that introduces the no-dig gardening method. And he's got some great videos. What you do, you just take your little piece of land, you measure it out. You're going to cover this with cardboard. Just take cardboard boxes, open them up, spread them out flat, lay them right across your weeds or your grass right here, and then give them a good soak. And then on top of that, you can either just load about six to eight inches of pure, clean compost, or if you want an extra layer of nutrition, you can lay straw, not hay, but straw, and then on top of that you're going to put your compost. And then you are going to have a beautiful place to plant just about anything. You don't have to weed it because the cardboard and the, the um, compost are going to keep those weeds from coming up. At least that's the theory. We'll find out because I did it in several beds. Um, and then you're going to have a beautiful place to start growing the things that you want. So let's just say that you've got your bed ready to go, ready to plant. You've built it already. And now you want to start designing a garden that's going to bloom from spring all the way through October. And because this is a potager, it's going to be a combination of different plants, vegetables, herbs, ornamentals, fruit trees, fruit bushes, and all manner of wonderful things. And what we're going to start with our bulbs, which are going to bloom in the spring now. Yeah, I know it's February, it's a little late for you to be planting bulbs. 
but I actually planted my bulbs in January and I'm going to go through the process of planting those bulbs with you so that next year you can do the same thing. So we'll start there.